So this first story is actually a recommendation. I got it. This was in my email, and this was sent by Moss X. Moss X? One of the two. But I appreciate this story. So he goes, hey, here's a story idea for you. Honey Island Swamp Monster. Probably never heard of it before. And it was funny because he also said that it's... The way that I read sometimes, especially when I'm reading emails and stuff like that, before I respond, I have to read it again. When I'm initially reading it, my eyes kind of scan it real quickly. So I see the title, Honey Island Swamp Monster, and then I see the word smell. So I was like, a monster that smells like honey? I'm in. But then I realized that it was just a smelly monster, but it was still intriguing. Although I would have enjoyed the sweet smelling monster. I wonder if any cryptids do smell good out there. I wonder if there's a cryptid that smells like sweet, sweet flowers. Ghosts do. So I don't see why cryptids wouldn't. Anyways, so we're going to Louisiana. And a little bit out of New Orleans, a little f- couple miles away from New Orleans, there is Honey Island Swamp. Walking through the swamp. The, we're walking through the swamp. We got those rubber pants on so we won't get wet. But I made sure that yours were just a little too short so they immediately get flooded with water and you sink a bit. And then I have a good chuckle. And while you're dealing with horrible diseases you catch from the swamp, we also go back in time. We're going back to the year 1974. And in 1974, two men emerged from the swamp, Harlan Ford and Billy Mays. No, no, sorry. Harlan Ford and Billy Mills. The, they come out of the swamp with a plaster cast of a footprint, and they, like, throw it down on the ground and go, Proof! Now, there wasn't anyone around when they did that, so then they had to pick it up and actually go into town, and then they take it into a bar and go, Proof! And people are like, Proof of what? So Harlan Ford and Billy Mills had had said that they had once seen a creature in Honey Island Swamp. They described it as seven foot tall, gray haired creature that they estimated would weigh about 400 pounds, giant monster man. So, and it had yellow or red glowing eyes. And the difference in the eye color could be chalked up to either what time of day they saw it in, or how bloodshot their own eyes were when they were out hunting. Glug, glug. But anyways, they come into town with this plaster cast, and people are thinking, well, it kind of sounds like a Bigfoot, Harlan. And he's like, yeah, but this one's different. Because look at this plaster cast, and it looks like it had webbed toes. And you can see photos of these. They basically, it looks like it has four toes. One's kind of folded in or something weird. But the toes are webbed. It's not like a primate's footprint. And the thing is, is in 1963... These guys came out of Honey Island Swamp. They're like, this is what we just saw. We were walking through the swamp. We saw a boar with its throat ripped out and a giant monster. And we went to shoot it and the monster ran away. Nobody believed him. People are like, "That's you're making that up. You're making that up. So about nine years later, to, uh, more like 11 years later, they find this. They find a footprint. And they go and they pour the plaster in there and bring it back. People are like, Here, they go, here's proof. There's proof that there is this monster running around. Nobody believes them. And it's one of those weird things that a lot of communities really like to have, like Bigfoot sightings and stuff like that, because you can sell tchotchkes and things like that. But this would not take off. This would not take off. Harlan dedicated his life to finding proof of the Hunting Island Swamp Monster. He was out there consistently after these two sightings, and he did bring back other plaster casts. But for whatever reason, the people in the town took it as a a myth. They weren't really embracing it. Even today, you have tour guides, and they say the swamp, this swamp is really, like, beautiful. It's very untouched. You go there to visit. It's just a great place. It's a great recreational place, and they have boat tours. And you can take boat tours through the area. I was reading this article one guy did. He said, hey, I'm going to go on this boat tour. Check it out. He talks to the two tour operators, and they're like, there's no Honey Island Swamp Monster. And it's funny, because these people could actually make more money by saying that there was, but they're like, it doesn't exist. It absolutely doesn't exist. There are boat tours you can take where it's called the Honey Island Swamp Monster Boat Tour, but it was funny, in the article where the guy was taking the boat tour, he saw that boat still docked, no one was on it. Because people just want to go and enjoy nature. Even in that area, people aren't like, this creature exists, you know, oh no, I ran into it when me and my uncle were out playing baseball one day and the baseball fell in the swamp. Like, they don't buy it. Which is odd, but it might just be because the only people who have ever seen it 
are the two people who first saw it and then the people who started bringing back plaster casts. Harlan Ford was dedicated to finding the proof of this thing, so much so that for the next six years he was constantly looking for it. Why only six years? Because he died in 1980 without ever having any proof, conclusive proof, that what he saw standing over that boar and what was leaving those footprints was real. And it would be a footnote, uh, no pun intended, it would be a footnote in cryptid history about the Honey Island Swamp Monster. It would just be a funny name for a creature that the locals don't believe, that they almost actively dismiss. It's like when people go to towns and start asking for the Blair Witch, they're like, Blair Witch isn't real, you know, it's fake, right? Now, like I was saying, this is, would be a footnote in cryptid history, but the main proponent of it is dead. I don't know what ever happened to Billy Mays. He's a footnote within a footnote. It was, he passed away, there was never any proof, people assumed it was a hoax, and it might have been, but a hoax that has become cemented in the minds of millions of girls everywhere. Monster High dolls are a line of dolls of monster girls that are attending a school called Monster High. So you have Frankie Stein, and you have like a Dracula chick and a wolf girl and Laguna Beach or whatever. They're all the daughters of famous monsters. And somehow, all these famous monsters now are also attending Monster High with Honey Swamp, the daughter of the Honey Island Swamp Monster. She's not a Bigfoot. She is like a sea creature thing. So she get rid of all that fur. No girl wants to be covered in fur, be seven feet tall or 400 pounds. Some of them might want to be seven feet tall. But she's just like a, a, a creature from the Black Lagoon type creature. She's 115 years and monster years, according to her bio, which is how I'm going to start describing my age. And so here's her bio. Let's learn a little bit about Honey Swamp, since we don't know much about her father. I'm a proper southern ghoul from the swamps of Honey Island. My mama always taught me if you work hard and follow your screams, you can be anything you want to be. Well, I want to be a world-famous cinema cinematographer in Hauntlywood. Now, I do know how to pronounce the word cinematographer, but the dashes here make me think they're trying to emphasize ogre. Cinema to ogre fur. Because, you know, she's a monster. She's also friends with Claudia Wolf and Viperine Gorgon if you want to complete your collection. So he did get that <laughs> legacy, at least. So Harlan, if you're up there and you're watching down, I hope you're happy with the fact that millions of girls around the world are now playing with dolls Named after your hoax. So it wasn't a waste of time. Who would have thought that when you and your buddy one drunken evening decided to go out and start pouring plaster into footprints you made and that hoax turned in to a worldwide phenomenon? If you play with Monster High Dolls. Otherwise, you still don't know about this creature. But but good job. Good job, Harlan. You, you created a hoax and it became a doll. And I don't, honestly, I don't think anyone else can claim that. A lot of hoaxes out there, but not all of them attend Monster High. That was a clip from our daily podcast, Dead Rabbit Radio. Dead Rabbit Radio is available anywhere that you listen to podcasts. It's daily paranormal, conspiracy, and true crime news. If you want to hear the full episode that this clip came from, check the link below. Please like and subscribe. And hit that little bell, too. That does some magical stuff. Thanks, guys.